Come on, where is it? Dave, it's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You've got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Mold stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller and in a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all-in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, how we doing, Boise State fans? Greetings and happy Wednesday to you here at Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com, a Lithia Ford Wednesday edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Make sure you check out lithiafordboise.com. You can view their full inventory of vehicles. John Mallory, uh, not even 12 hours after you were just off the air on BNN with uh, Mike Sanford on Ball Talk. You are uh, up and at him early again to uh, talk about some of the similar topics, some different, but... Uh, Appreciate you uh, last night turning around this morning for your uh, contractually obligated appearance here on a Wednesday, and uh, appreciate you, man. How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing well, BJ. Let's get after it today on a Wednesday. Spring football practice 14 tomorrow, BJ, and you get 15 practices in these things. Practice 15, of course, will be the spring game on Saturday. So here we go, about ready to wrap up a spring football season, and then you get in the weight. And then when August it comes, it's back together and everybody's loving it. So, yeah, let's talk, man. Good stuff. Well, Bill L. says Ball Talk was excellent. Uh, so hopefully folks will check it out. Last night's episode of Ball Talk, John Mallory, Mike Sanford. You dove a lot into the quarterbacks. We're going to get into that today. We're going to hear from some of uh, Dirk Cutter and his comments. I know you guys got into that a lot yesterday on uh, Idaho Sports Talk. Folks can go back and listen to that episode on uh, Idaho Sports Talk on KTIK.com, the KTIK app. Um, but, uh, yeah, go uh, also on the YouTube channel. If you did miss ball talk last night, kind of a weird Tuesday, eight 30, uh, episode, but you can go check it out 
uh, on uh, the Bronco Nation News YouTube channel, Ball Talk, Mike Sanford, John Mallory. Uh, it was great stuff uh, last night. All right, so uh, we got the spring game on Saturday. We had our first chance yesterday to talk to uh, Dirk Cutter, John Mallory. By the way, I'll just throw this in there. We'll mention this real quick before we uh, focus on football. Jace Whiting, UNLV. What do you think of that, man? I'm happy for Jace Whiting, man. I will see how they're going to use him, see where he's going to be in the mix on that squad, and see how they utilize maybe Jace Whiting's strengths, which I've always felt, at least this past year, certainly was long-range shooting. I would have liked him to shoot a few more. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a little less point guard, maybe a little more off-guard stuff and setting up for becoming more of a just a lights-out, dangerous shooter, but... I think a lot of people are surprised. I think they thought maybe it'd be a, a classification down type of thing for the league. BJ, not the class, but like Big Sky, WCC, Big West, but no, Mountain West. And it's going to be interesting too, BJ, because we're going to get in an era now where players are going to come back to the arena who previously played there. Um, and that element hasn't existed much, if at all in college basketball, at least the one that we grew up in, BJ. And, you know, if UNLV comes to Extra Mile next year, that'll be fun to see Chase Whiting play in a runner Rebel uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra Mile Arena, Chase Whiting going to be uh, very curious to see his role there. I mean, he could shoot. We obviously knew that he could shoot. He just didn't get a ton of opportunity, um, didn't take a ton of shots at Boise State because he didn't play a ton of minutes. But uh, for him yeah. to stay in, the, stay in the Mountain West, uh, good for him and excited to see what happens there with him. And, yeah, you mentioned, like, Cardenas is uh, going to be going back to San Jose. I'm sure all five fans there will be heckling him that game. Uh, you've got uh, Xavier Ducell. They won't, even, him. They won't yeah. even know. I mean, Xavier, San Jose Xavier Ducell started at Wyoming, then went to Fresno State, and now he's got two visits to Nevada and San Diego State. So he might go for a third Mountain West school. Uh, so you're seeing all kinds of random stuff happening. So, yep, uh, no new news on the additions or visits or anything for Boise State basketball, but Jace Whiting, uh, I thought he might go, you know, big sky or something, maybe get a little chance to start, play more minutes, go closer to his family down there in Provo, Utah. His mom's a head coach at BYU, um, but uh, stays in the Mountain West premier you know brand like unlv and uh, again he's playing behind one of the best point guards in the conference and Deon thomas so we'll see how much time he gets but i know that uh they talked about him maybe getting some some time at the shooting guard spot we'll see so uh mm -hmm. congrats to jace and his family and hope it works out well for him and yeah we'll be uh, i'm sure we remember we all remember the rob whaley revenge game which he didn't really know what he meant how to what what he meant oh, by yeah. that uh, Nat, now we're going to have the Jace Whiting revenge game when he comes to the Mile Arena here later this season. That'll be a fun side story, man, for sure. All right, Dirk Cutter. We're talking football pretty much primarily this whole episode today. Again, you can get your comments in, your questions in, in the ICCU YouTube chat, and we'll get to those uh, throughout the show. Makes the show a little more easy, a little funner. A little more easy, is that right? Uh, easier, funner when we have uh, interaction with uh, you guys that are watching the show. It's not just me and Johnny sitting here talking. We like to uh, include the, the comments and questions and things. So anytime you got one, let us know there in the ICCU YouTube chat. But I uh, got a couple of clips from Dirk Cutter I want to play, Johnny. Uh, talk about his thoughts on Malachi Nelson, the quarterbacks, the offense. But uh, before we dive into that, I guess generally, what were your takeaways from uh, our first conversation with Dirk Cutter since before spring ball started? Yeah, well, me and Prater were having fun with it. Prater was like, you know, if you think that's grumpy, you should have covered him from 98 to 2000. He was a lot grumpier than that. But, you know, it was nice to see Dirk kind of, I think, paint as honest a picture as he could to the media about what he's seeing in spring. And he said it on a couple of occasions, BJ, it's not good enough. You know, it wasn't good enough. Um, he, he seemed frustrated that... Um, that Mad Dog wasn't able to do more because of his limitations. Like, I think Dirk said something, and I know you're going to play a lot of this, something along the lines of Mad Dog. It's frustrating for Mad Dog because he thinks he could come in and fix some of this stuff because he knows the scheme and the system better. And dang it, he can't because he's not ready for, uh, for full go. So there's that frustration there. And then just the terminology, the language difference. Um, what did he compare it to? It's like, you know, speaking Spanish and then having to learn to speak French. And, you know, this means that, and that means this now. So that's confusing. And it's beautiful that you can get this stuff done in spring. Can you imagine situations and many colleges go through that where they don't have this opportunity in spring because they're still working on 
infrastructure stuff within the program or whatever. So at least Boise State's able to get this thing going. And uh, spring game will be interesting because uh, Dirk was pretty fired up yesterday about not seeing what he wants to see with the offense at this point in spring. One practice left. What did he say, BJ? Yeah, it's not a great thing when the best play in practice is the last play in practice. And remember yesterday's final practice play, right? Yes, yes. The the best, he said, maybe the only highlight of the day or whatever, the, the best highlight of the day. Yeah, we were standing there in the corner, and, I mean, I got it goes both ways. I don't know which side you lean, the catch or the throw, um, but uh, Malachi Nelson, they were doing two-point conversions, and, again, not sure what we're actually supposed to say. I don't think they would care about this. They're, they're just practicing two-point conversion plays at the end of practice, uh, alternating ones and twos and ones and twos and just going out there. It almost felt like a fifth overtime or whatever because they're just going back and forth. You get your one play from the two-yard line, and Malachi Nelson throws a fade to the corner of the end zone uh, to uh, Prince Strawn, and the ball had to be perfect, and it was, but Prince Strawn putting his right arm out and literally just one-handing you know, the, the, the point of the ball right into his hand, pulling it in, getting not one, but I think two steps in bounds uh john mallory that was a a heck of a play and one of those plays that if we were allowed to video it would have been all over social media and one of those plays that gets you really excited or should if you're a boise state fan hearing about a malachi nelson to prince strong fade in the end zone and it's a, a sports center top 10 type play and you and me were about five feet away it was it was kind of the odell beckham catch from a decade ago that kind of set off this new wave of these one-handed, you know, almost palming the ball, you know, dudes who do have that hand size. And you know that about Prince too. I think I've even measured hands with Prince. I think I did it in front of you last year when he had his first media presser and he said he had the biggest hands on the team or for the receivers. Um, the throw back right corner, BJ, and I'm more of, it was a better catch than it was throw, but the throw was where it was absolutely where it had to be in a sense where the defender can't touch it. There's no way the corner is going to be able to make a play. So Malachi put the ball in a certain area where, okay, if Prince can come up and go up and get that and he believes he can, then maybe we have a chance at this play. And Prince was able, as you illustrated, to get that one-handed, you know, like I said, kind of Odell Beckham style catch. Yep. Yeah, it was sensational, man. If that happened in a real game, oh, yeah, that would be like one of those Khalil Shakir catches a few years ago where you're just like, how? It would have been like that. But it's good to know that Malachi and Prince are feeling each other out in that sense where Malachi's saying, dude, this guy is that big, that long, that athletic, his hand's that big that he can catch a ball one-handed with relative ease. I can put it in that sector at uh, three, two o'clock, right? And then he can go up and grab that thing. So it's nice that Malachi has that confidence and in, in, in Prince being able to make a catch like that. Hopefully we do see some opportunities maybe on Saturday in the spring game for a guy like Prince to have um, a big catch like that. BJ, I'm really high on Prince Strawn. I think he's going to take a massive leap. Um, what did he have? 12 catches last year? 14 catches last year. It wasn't very many, BJ. I'm looking right now on my stats here. Um, we're, 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 oh, nice show prep, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. I should know this. Where is Prince Strawn? Uh, slippy slappy, 12 catches. I should have stuck with my gut. I, I think that can be in the 30s or low 40s this year. So I, I expect a lot of things from Prince Strong. Well, then you have uh, Gerald saying, sounds like Dirk's very high on Austin Bolt. Yep. Uh, Crash is saying hyped about the Prince Bolt combo, and that says nothing about Capel's Marshall Camper. Um, we talked a lot about Prince and Bolt and needing to take that next step, and it sounds like both those guys this spring really have, Johnny. Like Dirk said, too, like Bolt just makes one play a day. Let Yesterday, I think it was the screen pass. Um, moving right to left, uh, and I don't even remember the quarterback. Um, it was just a quick catch from shotgun and just immediately throw the ball right to Austin Bolt still on the line of scrimmage. The receivers there on that side, on the left side, uh, go into blockers. And then Austin Bolt made like one move almost at the line of scrimmage, BJ, 
and just housed it up the sidelines and nobody could catch him. And that's a play. I don't know why that wouldn't work in an actual game too. Austin just had to make one guy miss there and then it turned into a track meet. And how many times across the middle have you seen Bolt come up with a huge play in practice? It feels like every day there too. Not just, BJ, he's not just a deep threat. They're using him all over the place. Like I said, just hiking the ball and throwing it to him, using him on crossing patterns. There's another guy right there. I mean, Austin Bolt, uh, I think, is going to have a massive leap in stats, too, because he only had, I don't even think he had 10 catches last year, BJ. You got these receivers, Prince and Bolt. Man, they are hungry. And you throw in Latrell Cables, who didn't get to play last year. Yep. He's hungry. Chris Marshall is trying to say, hey, I got to get it going here. Or when am I ever going to be a football player? He's hungry out there. Very hungry receiver core, BJ, for sure. And by the way, Chris Marshall was back on the field yesterday. He has missed almost all of spring uh, with uh, some sort of injury, uh, but he was back out there working with the twos. So I would think in some capacity, fans are going to get a chance on Saturday to probably see uh, Chris Marshall yeah. out there in this scrimmage. We'll see. But uh, he, he, you know, unfortunately, the spring was kind of a wash for him. He was doing a lot of trash talking and stuff on the sidelines, but really wasn't actually able to get out there. So we'll see if he is ready to go. Uh, on the first day, you guys had some fun with it on your show. You mentioned Dirk Cutter kind of being unhappy and and uh, you know grumpy, whatever. But uh, his opening question, uh, I just kind of said, "Where is the offense? How you feeling right now?" Uh, and here's what he had to say: Not where we need to be by any stretch, but uh, we, we made we've made progress. One of the things that's unusual about spring football and it's everywhere is you've got different lineups every day. You know, you got guys you're either holding out that are a little bit banged up, probably could play in a real game. And then you got guys that you're just missing because they are coming off off-season surgery or whatever. So, you know, I don't think we've, well, I know for a fact we've never had even close to our best 11 on the field. It's good for the other guys, you know, because you're developing your depth. But uh, sometimes you get some personnel mismatches out there. We've got a lot of scheme in, uh, probably too much scheme and not enough execution for where we, where we need to be. Well, there you go, Dirk Cutter. Uh, overall, Johnny, you know, pleased with some things. Talked a lot about him, and he is right. I mean, you got multiple offensive linemen, multiple receivers. Obviously, Maddox Madsen, Ashton Genty's not doing a whole lot of team stuff. I mean, yeah, we're talking about this offense, but a lot of pieces aren't even out there right now. Yeah, think about that, and um, it does build depth. But you can see the frustration there. Sometimes you just want to have your best eleven. You want to teach them what they need to be taught up to this point. And you want to see him go out there and execute it. And I guess when you come like with third cutter, where you've seen it at the highest possible level and you've seen it almost to perfection, you know, you strive for perfect for, for, for perfection, even though you're probably never going to get there. But if you don't at least strive for it, you're not going to get anywhere close. Um, that's interesting too. the thing that stuck out to me on that part, the NBJ where I think maybe he's saying maybe we put too much on the plate with scheme. You know, we're, we're teaching them the X's and O's and here's what we want to do and why we want to do it. And this is who we are as an offense. And this is going to be our scheme. And maybe we gave him a little too much of that. So when we have to go out and execute it on the blue, maybe there's too much going on and there should have been less. I don't know, but that, uh, that stood out to me on that. And we'll see you how many different type of schemes we see on the spring game. All right, the quarterbacks. What does Dirk Cutter think about the quarterbacks, the three uh, guys, Tiller, Madsen, and Nelson, all uh, going for the job here? All right, well, let's start with Madsen. I mean, he's he's the hardest because he's bored out there right now. He can only do seven-on-seven seven and individual. So there's a guy who, who has proved that he can play at this level he sees our offense struggling at times and knows he could make it better, but there's he's helpless. Like we get in those 11 on 11 drills and you know we, we got our faces kicked in at times today and you know he, he wants to help. So mm -hmm. you know he's, he's frustrated more than anything. I think uh, you know he's just licking his chops to get out there in the fall. Uh, C, CJ, you know CJ has definitely got enough talent to be the quarterback here. CJ sometimes makes the hard plays and misses on the easy plays. So just consistency mm -hmm. is where he's working hardest and, and in the leadership realm. 
and he's working on both, but again, none of us are where we need to be. And then Malachi, uh, just being able to process it faster. And, and again, part of that is like, he's going from Spanish to French. So he's learning a new language and that's, that's to be expected. We'll hear more on his thoughts on Malachi in a second here, but overall kind of reading between the lines of tea leaves, what you know about Dirk and things. How do you kind of look at what, how he's looking at the quarterback race here? Yeah, I, I think if Mad Dog was able to be full go this spring, he would be able to, cre to create a gap between him and the other two. That's kind of me at least translating what I'm what I'm seeing right there. That Mad Dog is 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 ready for this mentally, and it's just frustrating that physically uh, he's he's not there yet. But who's calling you, BJ? You heard that? Yeah, who's calling you? Uh, if you hon if you honestly want to know, it's my uh, my lender for my uh, home loan. Okay, right. ICCU. Shout out Brent Cotter. There we go. An ICCU go. mortgage. Brent Cotter, the best mortgage guy in the business, giving me a call. Says he's a big fan. He should know I'm on the air right now, but yet he's calling me. So uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, working out our uh, trying to buy a house. John Mallory. There's a lot of steps involved. Good for you, BJ. Don't all just put down cash like John Mallory can. We all don't make that much money, all right? <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Um, okay, BJ. Well, I mean, anyway, that's kind of my, my my deciphering. And Malachi, I think he'll be there. But yeah, it's just he. It, it's it's slower now because he's in translation mode, trying yeah. to figure out what's what with the packages. If he knew exactly what was going on, and he can just let his physical ability take over. And that's that's the key. That's what you want as a quarterback. You want to figure everything out, do your work on pre-snap, and then when the play comes, then, hey, now it's just a party. You know what you're doing. So I think he'll get there, too. And like Dirk said, CJ, Dirk, when I, Dirk said that. CJ has the uh, the talent to start a quarterback at Boise State. Yeah. Got to be more consistent. Well, we'll get into his thoughts on Malachi Nelson. And also, uh, me and Prater both asked in different ways, kind of what's this going to look like come the fall? And are all three of these guys even probably going to be here uh, in this competition? And I want to play those bites and discuss that here in just a second, Johnny. But first, got to thank Cutwater Spirits. More than 35 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails. You can pick one up at your local gas station or grocery store. And uh, perfect uh, pre-game tailgating for the spring game or uh, anything outside as the weather starts to get nice here. That next round at Timberstone, make sure you're picking up a Cutwater. RowPaint.com, our title sponsor. Just got done painting the interior of our entire house as we uh, got ready to sell it. And they did a tremendous job. Highly recommend all your painting needs, rowpaint.com, R-O-E paint.com. Check them out. Interior, exterior, they can touch up your siding. And of course, those concrete coatings transform the look of that garage, that garage, back patio, basement, that concrete slab in one day. Check them out. Get more information at rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union, I just mentioned them. We're going with them for our uh, home loan uh, for our uh, new house we're looking to purchase. ICCU can do it all. Uh, any kind of loans, banking, you name it. We got our business and personal accounts with ICCU. So happy we made the choice and switched to them. And as I said all the time, wish we had done it sooner. It's just so easy, great. Their eBranch mobile online banking is so easy to use. Highly recommend Idaho Central Credit Union. You might be happy with your banking. I promise you, you make the switch, you'll be even happier. Idaho Central Credit Union. Ridley's Family Markets, shopridleys.com, 14 locations across the state of Idaho. That CUNA location, love going down there. Nice uh, hometown grocery. You go in there and you just have that good feel uh, at Ridley's Family Markets. And uh, the deals probably help you make, make you feel good because they can get up to 40% off at the checkout line if you use their new Shop Ridley's app. Again, get more information, find a location near you, shopridleys.com. Johnny, I knew Matt Bowser was uh, number one, but I'm now seeing why. He helped us sell our home. We have a pending offer, seven days and we got over the asking price, and we got all kinds of extra stuff thrown in. Matt Bowser gets it done. He's a no-nonsense guy. He knows what he wants in the deal for the client, and he gets it done. And I was super impressed with the whole process from the first time he came to my house and looked at it. And we, we talked through the process to, uh, to yesterday when we got an accepted uh, pending offer now. Highly recommend Matt Bowser and his team. Number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley for a reason. Him and Kelly and their whole staff just did a tremendous job. We're very happy. We're halfway done. Now we got to find a house to buy. But in terms of selling our home, BowserRealEstate.com, 243-8222. You get personalized 
attention from Matt and his team. They're texting you, calling you anytime, day or night with updates on the offers and everything. And uh, just super happy and appreciative and thankful. And it was kind of eye-opening, to be honest, to see what just why Matt Bowser is as good as he is because uh, it, it's uh, it's eye-opening. So I, I can't get my eyes off those basketball shorts. I'm sorry, BJ. What? You love the shorts, huh? Uh, that's my era. Well, they should bring back the retro jerseys there, man. But uh, yes, thank you, Matt Bowser. Thank you, Bowser Real Estate. And again, you know, some people just think he has this thing where he'll only take the five million dollar homes, any home, any size. Ours is certainly not one of the larger ones in Boise, and he helped us get above asking price for it. So uh, super thank thanks to uh, Kelly and Matt and the whole team there. Okay, uh, Malachi Nelson, Johnny. Obviously, Saturday, all eyes are going to be on him. By the way, we're working, by the way, I've been uh, communicating with Cody Gogler. We're hoping to finalize something for a pregame show. Hoping Johnny, you might be able to stop by, be a part of that. And uh, we couldn't get the whole game, you know, broadcast on BNN, but at least hope to get a pregame show. Maybe show you some of the pregame warmups, that kind of stuff. Uh, trying to finalize the details. Might be up there on the patio or something. Uh, we'll figure it out. But yeah. either way, on our pregame, if the folks that are coming to the game. I mean, other than maybe Ashton Genty, but he ain't going to do much. I would say, and everybody knows what Ashton Genty can do anyway, I would say all eyes are going to be on number seven, Malachi Nelson, in this game on Saturday and what he gets to do and how he looks. And from a coach's perspective, Johnny, scrimmage two was the bigger deal. Scrimmage two was the last, you know, they, they really can script it and all that kind of stuff. We even heard it's not going to be a super long spring game on Saturday. And, and obviously it's just kind of that game where you don't want to get anybody hurt. But you want to put a show on for the fans and and help build that excitement for uh, the fall. And I think Malachi Nelson is going to be the number one guy folks are looking at on Saturday. Yeah, him and, and some of the receivers, you know, people will be interested in seeing, you know, Prince Strawn, I think out there, like we mentioned, Latrell Caples. I hope he gets almost a standing ovation on his first catch. And I don't care if it's a three-yard little receiver bubble screen that doesn't work. You know, they should appreciate Luttrell, everything he went through with that Achilles injury, BJ. Had we known that, you know, we could have had some sympathy for Trell and his comeback last year, too. We had no idea what happened, but the Achilles injury. So hopefully the fans have an opportunity to say, hey, appreciate you. Welcome back. Can't wait to see what you're going to do on the blue this year. Defensively, there's there's a lot of players that are going to be starting and high-level players, BJ, that aren't going to play in the spring game. So it's almost one of those things where, okay, you get to see Jake rip, take a lot of snaps here. You get to develop that depth as well. I don't know as far as units, who's going to win. I would say I'm, I would put my money on the offense, even without Ashton Genty playing in this game, because I think the offense has, 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 um, I guess they have less, key players out if that makes sense just defensively sure. bj and i know you can illustrate it there's like a good legit what four starters on the defense that aren't going to play in the spring game and i want to see i want to see some fun right so the spring game should be fun just keep them healthy and you know maybe a, a razzle dazzle here or that not i want to see some deep shots to some of these receivers i want to see the receiver db matchup I mean, the running game, we'll see what the running backs do as well. It'll be a chance for the fans to see Sire Gaines, man. They haven't got to see this kid. He runs like Adrian Peterson, man. Built, I'm sure, like Adrian Peterson was when he was 17 years old. It's a freak physical guy. I mean, man, this dude, I think he can put on a show. So I agree with you. Malachi clearly is number one. No question about it, but there's a lot of other interesting storylines on Saturday. I think I called it the, when did I say this, BJ? It'll be the highest attended spring game since Kellen was here or something when the Malachi news dropped or whatever it was. I don't know if I'm still there, but I guess I could get your opinion or people listening. Like, is everybody watching this going to go to the spring game? And what do you think the attendance is going to be like? Feels like people I mean are fired up. They've had some bad luck in recent years with the weather on the spring game, but right now we're looking at the, the highest temperature day out of the next 10, 72 degrees and, and partly cloudy on Sunday. So uh, around 70 degrees and sunny, 1.30 in the afternoon, come tailgate, hang out with your friends, go to the game, stop by the James beforehand. I mean, it's going to be uh, uh, a, a lot of fun. So uh, Crash will be there uh, for sure. Rodney says he's going. Andy Hill, yeah. first, first spring game, bringing the family, can't wait. Coming all the way from East Idaho, 
Uh, nice. hoping, hoping to get a photo with you as well. So uh, we'll see if we can uh, make that happen. Bring, bring your bring your glossies in your back pocket this time, Johnny. Don't forget those. He's uh, talking to you, BJ, not me. He wants a no, photo. He said Johnny. He said Johnny. Mr. BNN. It says, it says Johnny. So okay. uh, let's see. You mentioned Dirk Cutter. You mentioned uh, Malachi Nelson. I believe you asked this question to Dirk Cutter. Uh, his thoughts on uh, Malachi Nelson at this point. He's improved a lot. Uh, you know, first off, for being a new guy and playing quarterback and being in a room with other quarterbacks that all knew the system. So, you know, he's coming in where we use the same ver verbiage that they had before. So it was all new to him and he was he was lost swimming in terminology for for a while there. Uh, you know, you can you can see his ability as a thrower. It shines through uh, him just learning how everything is done at Boise State has been an adjustment, but but he's working on it. Uh, made made progress, but again, like a lot of guys, just not not where we need to be right now. Last time we talked to you, you, you talked about uh, had never, you never even seen him throw. You were going to show up on spring day, mm -hmm. camp number one. What was your initial thought when you saw him throw, and, and how did you kind of process his throwing? Yeah, you can you can see. I mean, he can spin the ball. All right, the, the, the kid can spin it, and he can make throws from off balance platforms. Now that can be a, a, a blessing at times, and it can be a curse at times. Like it was, there was a curse a couple times today. Uh, but but the guy can throw it, and he can throw it accurately for sure. All right, Johnny, uh, your thoughts on you know Dirk Cutter did not sign Malachi Nelson had nothing to do with his transfer. That was all Bush Hamden. Then Bush Hamden leaves, um, and now Dirk Cutter comes in. Didn't get a chance to see him throw a ball live until that first practice, and. We've seen it, Johnny. We've talked about it. Like, I mean, early on, the storyline was, hey, it's going to be a process for Malachi Nelson. Maybe he's not quite where everyone thinks he is. We saw him dropping the snaps in the first practice, making some interceptions where there was nobody within 30 yards of him in terms of a receiver. Now we're seeing more consistently, and I'm not trying to hype him up too much, whatever, but the last several practices, the last couple in particular, Johnny, we're both on the sidelines like, looking at each other after a couple of these throws. Malachi just, again, we're not in the meeting rooms. We're not in all the weight room. There's a lot more to it um, than that. But what we're seeing just in our untrained eye on the field, it looks to me like Malachi Nelson is looking much more comfortable, much more confident, and is making a lot better throws than he was early in camp. Uh, Malachi was the quarterback with the ones yesterday at practice, and I didn't see that switch. Um, CJ ran with the twos, Colt Fulton mop up duty with the threes or whatnot maybe a play here or there when some type of substitution happened or a helmet you know it was loose or a strap off or whatever the case where cj would take one rep with the ones or vice versa but i didn't see any of that so that was kind of refreshing to see malachi kind of okay he's going to get a full day with the ones um see what that does for his development you're right Dirk cutter didn't bring him in and and i don't see Dirk Cutter here in 2025. Um, if this is, you know, I don't talk about next year when it comes to college football, there's too much uncertainty. So, I mean, who's going to start week one, who's going to be the quarterback for this team. I can't imagine Dirk Cutter is going to let this thing continue to play through the season. I think he's going to have one guy that he's going to want, and this is going to be one year He's going to be here, and they're going to try to get to the college football playoff tournament this year. They're not playing politics in the future. So I think whoever the best quarterback is, that's who's going to start. I think if they had to make the decision today, um, if Mad Dog was healthy, Maddox Madison will be your starter against Georgia Southern. I think Dirk just feels comfortable with him. Now, Malachi can take the gig. Yes, CJ, I guess he could too, right? They're still, BJ, if this is a horse race and they're going around one lap, I mean, they're not even at the halfway point. August yep. is when this thing really heats up. They're just getting their feet wet here, almost like a, a preliminary hearing, right, uh, before the actual deal gets going. So um, I just wonder while the fan base is going to react to whomever it is that Dirk chooses. You know, if they say Maddox Mats is the starter, well, I, I know you're going to have your, 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 your chuckle heads on the chat right now. They're going to say, Oh no, Malachi's going to transfer now. Yep. I mean, that's, that's, that's the price of doing business in college football. Now and the kid's probably going to transfer. Heck you might hear of a quarterback transferring BJ 
on Sunday morning or Monday morning, right? With the portal. You just can't look ahead. I just wonder, I would imagine whoever Dirk Cutter tells you is the best quarterback Bronco Nation and gives you the best chance to win, that's your guy. And it doesn't matter what his resume is. Let's hear Dirk Cutter talking about that very uh, situation and the potential of the uh, when this competition is going to be played out and whether all three guys we, we should even expect to be here in the fall to be part of this competition. Uh, you know, the staff and Coach Danielson, they'll be, you know, they'll be looking at that as, you know, the evaluation process of spring happens more next week. But, uh, you know, we'll still have competition at the position because, you know, as we as we just sit today, none of us are playing good enough. So I'm, that means I'm not coaching them good enough. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll get it straightened out in the fall. Oh, I have very good memories of, Mal of Maddox, so I don't have too much problem with that. The, you know, the one thing about that, it's, no, this is a, a simple thing, is we have real game film of him playing. All I got to do is put on that film and, and watch him play. Like, playing in a real game and executing in a real game is way different than executing in practice. Do you... Do you see all three? I mean, all three with, with nowadays with NIL and transfer portal and all this. I mean, do you see all three? My guess, I mean, do you see in August first like all three guys still being here? Or do you at the end of the spring? Yeah. How do you look at the, who's yeah, third? We don't. Whether? We don't know that for sure. And like I said, uh, Coach Danielson actually started this week, and it will go into next week meeting with every player individually. Position coach wise, we'll meet with our guys next week. But that that whole portal thing that that throws a wrench into it. I mean, heck, me. Who knows what's going to happen at, at the end of these two weeks? Do you think he was alluding to something that he might know? Was he just saying generally, literally, like nobody expected dealing, you know, this guy to transfer or that guy? And you never know when someone could surprise you and pop in the portal. Or do you think when they have these evaluations next week, they tell him, you're first, you better hang on. You're second. You got a chance to start, though. I mean, if they tell somebody you're third, it's going to be an uphill battle. That guy decides I, I want out. I mean, I know we've talked a lot about this, but uh, I mean, Dirk Cutter said right there, you never know what can happen in the next two weeks. Yep. Um, I don't think he was, I don't think there's any hidden message there. I just think that's just the world of college football. It's just even when you know, you never know in college football, right? So I think that's where he was going on that one, BJ. I mean, now, hey, if there's like, say, Colt Fulton wants to transfer, I mean, he, I mean, he was he trying to do something in spring to impress and it didn't happen? Or has it really sit in that? You know, maybe he won't ever see the field here or for whatever reason he wants to play. Um, I don't know if it'll be the other three. Now, C.J. Tiller, I would believe, B.J., is going to have to be told, nada, no chance. You're not going to be the starter unless two injuries occur ahead of you. That's it. We're not going to give you the reps to be the starter. We're moving on. It's going to be Maddox Madsen or Malachi Nelson. When we start camp in August, those two are splitting the reps. And you're QB3, and you're going to be a redshirt freshman, and you're still a developmental player. Maybe C.J. Tiller's okay with that. Doesn't seem like the worst life to be a developmental college football player as a redshirt freshman go to school, drive a cool car, you know, hey, uh, take everything else that comes with it. C.J. Tiller is a super grounded guy, too, so maybe he will stay, and he'll know that next year the quarterback room is going to be entirely different. Who knows, right? So um, I think he's going to have to be told that. Other than that, Mad Dog, Maddox Madsen is not transferring anywhere. He thinks he's going to be the starter. He can't wait to get back out there and impress Dirk Cutter and Malachi Nelson. I don't think he wants to get that pattern going, BJ, or transfer portal and all the. You know, I, I think he's going to at least stay in Boise State this full year. Even if he doesn't win the job, I think Malachi will be your QB too. He's only a freshman, man. I mean, he has four years to play. It's crazy. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, uh, we'll take your questions and comments for the final couple of minutes here and uh, wrap up the show. So if you have a final question or comment, uh, get that in. By the way, Johnny, congratulations to Jonah Dalmas. He becomes the sixth Boise State student athlete, the fourth football player to get a rig from Lithia Ford of Boise. So Jim Sterk and company at Lithia Ford, uh, they uh, have given uh, vehicles uh, through their NIL program to four football players. Jonah Dalmas is the newest. We teased it on yesterday's show. Jonah Dalmas, Andrew Simpson, uh, Ahmed Hassanin, 
and Matt Lauder, all driving vehicles from Lithia Ford to Boise. So go return the favor. They're supporting Boise State. They're helping the NIL program. Return the favor. Go to Lithia Ford to Boise for your next purchase. And again, you can view online all the vehicles at LithiaFordBoise.com. Taco Bell, they're doing a ton for Boise State as well. TacoBellWorks.com. You can get more information on the money, the scholarships they're donating. They are literally funding the men's and women's basketball scholarships for the players you see out there on the court with their endowed scholarship program. They're giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to Boise State. So SON Management, the Nicolaisen family, uh, appreciate their support of BNN and Boise State. And again, they're hiring. Check them out. Get more information. You get free food while you work and half your wages the next day after your shift. TacoBellWorks.com. The Blue and Orange Store, the Blue and Orange Store.com. Oh, Johnny, we got some cool stuff in the works about an event this summer and some things we're doing with the Blue and Orange Store. I wish I could spill the beans, but we got to wait another week or two. We'll get through spring ball and then get to that. But I think Boise State fans are going to be excited to find out about something coming to the Treasure Valley that the Blue and Orange Store is going to be involved with. The Blue and Orange Store.com. Check them out. The Blue and Orange Store.com. Online, you get free shipping any order over $40, or you can just go to the Boise Town Square Mall there, the second floor next to Perimage, and I'm talking jerseys, caps, hats, bumper stickers, you name it. Get it all at the Blue and Orange Store. And if you need a job, you're thinking about the trucking industry, maybe you haven't thought about the trucking industry, you should. It's a booming industry right now, and uh, you need uh, some permits and paperwork and things to kind of start your own business or to be uh, licensed uh, to uh, you know tow that size of a load. You can get that at Transportation Compliance Service, all the overweight DOT permits, everything you need. Check them out. They'll help you out every step of the way. I know Jason Witten got his RV hooked up with them. A lot of famous what? people, yes, have uh, used transportation compliance service it's a low a national company but it's based here in the treasure valley so check them out at uh, transcomservice.com and i want to give a quick shout out to lean feast uh, oh. we saw we saw mike burns yesterday johnny i was doing my show out in the parking lot and you saw me mike burns came over to say hello and he had his uh lean feast meal in his bag that he was taken into the office for uh to put in the microwave for lunch so uh, even the great mike burns is uh, getting fed by lean feast leanfeastmeridian.com Check them out, Lean Feast. The, the website at the bottom is wrong. It's leanfeastmeridian.com. I'll get that updated. And uh, fully customizable meal prep service. And uh, again, you're talking, you know, ten bucks. Uh, you know, regular cheaper than it would be to go to Chipotle or someplace else, McDonald's, and you're getting fresh, healthy, customizable meals uh, right there in your microwave in two minutes. So I know Mike Prater's on them as well. I'm sure Johnny smells it, sees it there in the office. Oh Check yeah, out Lean Feast Meridian. Dot com And Johnny, uh, we are looking forward. I talked to uh, Jonah Dalmas again yesterday, the BNN golf tournament. We all are down to our final four foursomes in the morning. If you want to play in the morning, go work that half day in the afternoon or take the rest of the day off. We only have four foursomes remaining. This thing is getting bigger and bigger every year. We do have af some afternoon spots available, but I expect that to sell out as well. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All your favorite coaches, players, Again, we already have Spencer Danielson confirmed to be out there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, again, looking forward to it. I know, Johnny, you were talking to the Atkinson's folks yesterday out at practice, Atkinson's Mirror and Glass. They'll be sponsoring a whole. Uh, Jay Tuss usually plays in their group, but uh, we'll, we'll see. There's some competition for Jay this year, so we may see uh -oh. if we can raise some money for uh, the Idaho Youth Sports Commission, maybe bid off Jay uh, the night before. We're having an event May 30th. Uh, where we'll have a QA and a with Spencer, hopefully Leon. we got some more details coming on that. But uh, sign up now. Don't wait. Get your group together. Get your money in, and um, it's going to sell out. So reigns at bronconationnews.com. You can email me or check out bronconationnews.com slash golf uh, to get more information. But don't wait. This is going to sell out. It's going to be an awesome day out there at Timberstone uh, Golf Course. Okay, a couple. we got about three minutes here. Let's see. i got a couple comments here. Um Felt like if, Mal uh, if Malachi didn't want to be here, he would have left when Bush did. Um, heard they're giving away Genty posters and jerseys this Saturday. Any word on how many they're giving away at the spring game? It's T-shirts. I don't think it's jerseys. And they have the Heisman logo on there. So they're going to be giving away some of those. Any details on the number of uh, them, Johnny? Yeah, no, I don't have those details yet either. I don't know if it's going to be the first, what, 2,500, whatever the case is. But I mean, it's gonna give people some encourage some encouragement to get there a little earlier and get one of those. I mean, this is kind of the kickoff of the Heisman campaign or whatever. I mean, it is an Ashton Genty Heisman T-shirt. I don't know if you'll have an opportunity to to buy one wherever. And then the season poster that they give out, uh, that'll be cool too. But some of the dates, BJ, will move because of the days of the games. Not every game will be on Saturday. 
Yep, that is correct. We'll get that probably early June, I believe, that last week of – usually the week of the golf tournament probably is when they uh, do a lot of that. When is camper going to be ready? Uh, we would suspect fall camp, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, fall camp, that's the target for Cam Camper. He hasn't played at all, Chris Marshall, sparingly in spring. Uh, 1.30, somebody's asking when the gates open. I don't know the answer to that. I would guess 1 o'clock maybe, um, yeah. maybe 12.30. Sorry, I don't have the answer to that. I'll try to get it by Friday, but the game starts at 1.30, so I would assume it'll at least be 1 o'clock, but uh, it's going to be 70 degrees, sunny. You're encouraged to tailgate out in the parking lot like a normal game and have fun and go in there and watch. And uh, It's going to be kind of a glorified practice. It's not going to be a super long scrimmage, but you'll get to see all your favorite players out there, and then uh, they are going to invite fans down onto the field for autographs and things after the game. So you want to get Ashton Genty's autograph. That may be worth something someday. Um, I think they're limiting it to like one a person or two a person, but there is going to be an opportunity to meet the players, meet the coaches, and get autographs. You just have to wait about 20 minutes for the cooling off period after the game ends and then go down there, and that should be uh, that should be fun. Clint's wondering if somebody can get him a poster. He lives out of town. If any of you guys want to help out Clint and grab him a poster, you can do that. Uh, and then uh, want to know about Marshall. I haven't seen him much, Johnny. Uh, how does he look on the drills? Anything catch your eye about Chris Marshall? I would say his competitiveness with all the trash talking he does on the sidelines. Yeah, um, he's, just, yeah he's big. He's explosive. Um, he has terrific hands. I haven't seen him put a ball on the ground. Um, but, yeah, just haven't seen a lot of him, man. I mean, everybody looks good in the individuals and in, in the route running. And, I mean, it's easy to beat. In a lot of cases, when they do the one-on-one -on -one DB versus receiver, in many cases, it's an unfair fight. The receiver has a massive advantage in just being able to beat a DB in a one-on-one -on -one situation in certain places. So I've seen him do that, too. I will say this, though. Last, uh, what was it, yesterday, in, in, the, in a scrimmage, 11-on-11, 11 11, it was the twos. Marshall was out there, and I saw him make at least one, maybe two catches of live scrimmage ball. So he has caught a couple passes out there i'd like to see him on saturday i just don't know if they're gonna risk that bj yeah, they just so. do risk it what are they gonna use i i don't know man but it would be cool to see him out there and as for ashton Genty's autograph you know we're having him on in studio today on idaho sports yes. Talk. he gets to sign bj our wall of fame here where we have everybody in studio who comes and hangs with us we have him sign our board, and uh, Ashton Genty will join the board. BJ, you're not on here, and we need to change I, that. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I don't, um, I think you probably need to keep me off. I'll, I'll keep me off of that if you want that thing to be worth anything. <laughs> uh, final thing or two: yeah. What are the odds Marshall Camper or Nelson never touch foot on the blue? I would say zero or close to it. I mean, I, Marshall and Camper aren't going anywhere. They're going to be here, and I think I don't think no, I, I don't believe Nelson's going to transfer. It would I guess. Be the school tells Marshall Camper or Marshall or Camper that we don't want you on the team. They're not going to do that, I don't think, unless something would happen. So, yeah, um, as far as, like, playing, though, I think that guy's mentioning, like, actually being on the team, playing in a game, uh, maybe a small percentage just because that's the landscape of college football. You just never know, BJ. And, you know, who knows? Maybe, uh, yeah, I, I don't think any of those guys, I couldn't see them getting into the portal right now. No way. No, nope. and then uh, somebody was asking about. I don't know if you saw Jason Steele's brother plays at San Jose State. He's entered the transfer portal, played in twelve games last year in offensive lineman. So maybe he would look to transfer to Boise State. They could add some uh, some depth there on the offensive Pretty line. Nice. So, what what position do you think they need the de depth the most? Like if they vertical portal. portaling, BJ. What position? Uh, let's do you save that want? for next week. Maybe we're out of time here. Uh, I would say uh, you can never have enough depth on the O line. Probably you can I'd never have corner. enough depth. I'd say corner. They need another corner. Uh, and John, no TV coverage for out of state fans. I, I sent, mentioned this before, but I, I tried. We couldn't get it done at BNN. We're hoping to at least get you some pregame coverage. We'll see if we can get that done. But we'll have uh, there'll be highlights out there and full coverage. Yeah. And Johnny and Prater are doing a post game show down from the blue, so you can at least listen in for the audio version of that. Um, but uh, Johnny, you mentioned uh, big big uh, in studio guest today, man. Idaho Sports Talk. Yeah, we, we have fun. We like to get a guy in studio, BJ. This is like our fourth consecutive Wednesday of having someone. I think it started with Khalil Shakir, and we're just on this run, and obviously a home run guest today with Ashton Genty, a full half hour. I think uh, part of it is just going to be a call-in segment where we let Bronco Nation, if you guys have a question for Ashton Genty, Listen to the show today, call our Double Tap Pub hotline, and maybe you'll come on and 
and get picked and be able to ask him something. That'll be cool. Three to six. Make sure you're listening. Idaho Sports Talk. Uh, Johnny Prater, JP Bob, the whole crew. Three to six. That's uh, 95.3 FM, 1350 AM. You got KTIK.com and then uh, the KTIK app. And if you miss it, I always I always uh, pimp the podcast. That's the uh, the, the uh, app they have there. The easiest way to go back and listen to the show right there on your Apple podcast uh, on, on your phone. So appreciate you as always, Johnny. And uh, it's, it's been a fun show, man. Appreciate everybody for checking us out. Thanks to the sponsors. Thanks to all of you guys, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com.